a very good evening to one and all i welcome you all to surakshit bharat campaign present cyber awareness talk on drone don't trust your eyes they can deceive you we are extremely thankful to respected rajesh kumar sir for accepting the invitation and being the part of this surakshit bharat campaign thank you sir now i request my co-host ruchika to kindly take the charge of the session and introduce our speaker over to you ruchika thank you so much ma'am for giving me this opportunity so uh, today uh, we have with us dr rajesh kumar sir who is going to present his uh, cyber awareness talk on don't trust your eyes they can deceive you um, uh, on behalf of sifs india i uh, immensely uh, introduce dr rajesh kumar uh, dr rajesh kumar sir is working as a head of department in forensic science uh, head of department of forensic science government institute of forensic science aurangabad he has completed msc and phd in forensic science in 2006 and 2013 respectively he has been working in the area of automated forensic examination for more than 14 years his area of research includes computational forensics multimedia forensics image processing and pattern recognition quality of his research is evident from his publications in journal of high impact factors before joining the academics he has worked in various fsls of country including cfsl hyderabad and fsl delhi for more than 8 years and examined more than 300 cases he has delivered more than 50 invited talks in various institutions like uh, iit delhi isi kolkata and cbi academy gaziabad for his contribution to forensic community dr kumar have received prestigious young scientist award from ministry of home affairs government of india with this i welcome you sir in this session uh, now over to you sir thank you uh, organizer for having me here dr ranjit Kritika, Ruchika, and everyone who is associated with Surakshit Bharat and SIFS India. Thank you, sir. So, uh, let me share my screen first. Yes, sir. Whether my screen is visible? Yes, sir. Your screen is visible. Uh, kindly put. in a screen shot screen share mode thank you sir thank you so i am uh, putting my video off so that there should not be any problem of bandwidth i think that would be okay so good evening friends so we are meeting today on the day of children's day a very important day for us we are celebrating uh, Uh, both anniversary of pandit jawaharlal nehru the first prime minister of india more importantly uh, this is a children's day so we must have something which has to be given to our children and uh, this topic which i would present today is not only for children but everyone so uh, before starting uh, this session let me give you some disclaimer the first one is uh, that by this title i don't want to uh, discourage or spread any negativity that whatever you are seeing is not correct or what so that is not the aim you will understand what i would like to say that don't believe or don't trust your eyes the meaning of that secondly uh, in this presentation i have used many images or uh, which may be of uh, any political leaders or uh, maybe you can say associated with various parties but uh, my aim is not to uh, i will say give any disrespect to anyone rather it is just to give a true information by uh, citing different examples so uh, i would like to say that if i heard anyone by showing those images or maybe videos so in the beginning only i tender my unconditional apology so friends 
you must be aware of star war star war uh, was basically the american series having uh, a fight between a terrestrial species and human being and there uh, uh, you might be remembering that in uh, episode 4 a new uh, hope there be van cannot be well that your eyes can deceive you don't trust them friends uh, the reason is that, that there are many things which we would like to understand which we would like to think that it should happen like uh, that way we see in that fashion even even now there are various research which has proved the fact that let's say if we are in a mental condition so we try to uh, think in a manner so we interpret thing in that manner and uh, that is why i choose it we know that in digital era things are changing very fast technology are coming together uh, in lots of areas it's era of multidisciplinary thing so uh, you will see that there are many things coming together there are many technology which are coming together so trusting the thing is now more difficult so uh, friends there was a proverb we used to hear from uh, our uh, parents or everyone our teachers the seeing is believing whatever we see is correct but what you will say uh, about these images so uh, these all images are uh, you can say there on social media at different time and another you will find all these kind of images so what you will say about this or maybe this kind of images uh, which was there, there there may be some controversy on those images and later on what happened that everything was clarified again uh, like there was an actress and there uh, uh, some video was circulated these day there are uh i'm so sorry to interrupt you sir your voice is not audible uh, i request everyone that uh, if uh, sir has been audible to you all please let us know so we extremely apologize for this inconvenience and uh, we just quickly check the connection with sir and uh, get back to you please be in the meeting and uh, we will rectify this in a short while thank you for understanding
uh, I would like to inform everyone that it hardly takes five more minutes that uh, sir will join again. There was a slight of technical glitch from sir's end, but we will be joining in a short while. So please be in the meeting. Maximum in five minutes, we'll have sir again with, the, with us. Thank you. Uh, so sorry, everyone, uh, for this internet or technical glitches. I got disconnected. Uh, no problem, sir. So let me share my screen again. Is it visible? Yes, sir. So uh, what I was saying, I don't know whether but uh, what I wanted to say is that there are many content on digital platform, which you will obviously will understand that these things should be uh, not genuine, but there are many things where it is very difficult to discriminate that whether it is uh, genuine or not. So uh, these kind of things are becoming challenging. So uh, you will see that this kind of uh, messages are coming to your WhatsApp and people are forwarding it uh, through different, you can say platform or uh, different, uh, you can say social media platforms. So these kind of thing you will find all together is happening. Uh, we are getting it on day-to-day -day basis. These kind of, uh, you can say, misinformation, disinformation, or uh, rather we should say information disorder. So these kind of information disorder we get on a frequent basis. And then uh, some of us forward it, some of us stop it at our end only. Uh, when it is obvious to us that, okay, this uh, should be fake. So what we do is we stop it. And uh, if we, are confused somehow that whether it is not or not, whether it is correct or not, people are uh, forwarding it from one uh, platform to another. You you must have uh, seen that during uh, this uh, uh, COVID nineteen. So there was uh, like a misinformation which was circulated all around that uh, Nobel laureate. Uh, Suku Honjo, uh, who tried to contact at uh, Wuhan, the scientists who were working in uh, their virology laboratory, but they were not able to uh, contact it. And uh, it was said claiming that uh, this coronavirus is man-made. And then uh, 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 Mr. Honjo, he has to come to the media with lots of disappointment and he has said that okay this kind of uh, news are basically fake this kind of news are basically circulated uh, a fake news if you uh, see 19 if you believe in the data given by NCP, so the cyber crime which was reported in 2020 was 50,035 and uh, if you see statistically, there was a surge of 11.8%. And uh, if you see uh, what kind of data, fake news, which were spread on the social media, so there was 578 incidents. So uh, please remember, these 578 incidents are reported incidents, which were reported to uh, like police, that these kind of uh, fake news or uh, information disorder are, are being circulated. Uh, there are many which were not uh, reported, which we get on the daily basis, uh, maybe in terms of uh, political propaganda or propaganda by a company. So all those kind of things are being circulated and that is mostly unreported. So this 578 incident, which you can see in NCRB data, that is uh, what which has been reported in 2020. So uh, let us understand that uh, whether this fake news 
is the right term which we should use. So if you believe uh, on uh, the books on journalism, so what is news? But news is something which can be verified. So news is an information that can be verified for public interest. And uh, when we are saying fake news, so there is some problem using this term uh, because uh, when it has been circulated, it has not been verified first and whether it is correct or not. So it has been circulated either unknowingly by you can say laymen or maybe uh, people like us, or sometime it was circulated by some uh, intention. So intention may be malicious. So it was circulated with those, you can say, intention, or sometimes intention may not be there. So seeing this fake content which is being circulated on social media or any other platform or through newspapers, whether saying that fake news will be correct or not. So if you believe on uh, the literature of journalism, it should not be talked as fake news. Rather, the appropriate term is information disorder. And the term was coined by, as you can see, Wardell and uh, uh, Durkan. So uh, information disorder may be classified like this. So they, may, they are basically satire and parody, maybe misinformation, it may be disinformation, it may be malinformation. So uh, when we call satire, so as we all understand, satire is the humorous content on a particular subject. So let's say it may be based on uh, uh, infl inflation or it may be based on any other issues. The humors are being circulated. So that is basically satire. Misinformation is again, uh, uh, you can say the wrong information which is being circulated, but here there is basically no uh, intent Basically, one who is spreading it understand that this kind of information is true. So that is what misinformation is. This information is, yes, the content is fake, content is incorrect, and uh, you have some intention to circulate it. And malinformation is true information, which is circulated with malicious intention. So let's say if you have found somebody's some private videos or something, so to blackmail that person that kind of information is being, being circulated so that is what is malinformation i hope i am audible to everyone ruchika or kritika yes sir yeah yeah am i audible clearly yes sir yes sir you are yeah, okay thank you so uh let's say if we would like to put information disorder so or we can uh, display it like this. So there are two things. One is falseness in the content of the information. And second is intention. So one, one is falseness, another is intention. Misinformation, as you can see, it is one side which is uh, about falseness. So content is false. Disinformation, as you can see, is having uh, a common both. So Content is also false and intention is also wrong. And malinformation on the other hand uh, is the correct information as I told you, uh, but uh, here intention is wrong. So there are again, various types of uh, this misinformation, disinformation and malinformation. So we are going to look uh, all these things in a bit detail, detail in the sense I would like to explain all these terms uh, because uh, these terms or these uh, information are circulated uh, around us in daily basis. So uh, we'll discuss that. Before uh, that, let us understand that who can be victim of information disorder. So it is understood that one who is uh, not literate or maybe less literate they can be victim of information disorder. One uh, who is educated, uh, have good knowledge, or maybe they are, uh, 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 you can say they are uh, 
aware of the things they cannot be a victim of information disorder. So let us uh, quote a survey which has been done in the United States on uh, adults regarding altered videos and images that uh, what you feel looking at those images and videos which are being circulated maybe uh, to spread a propaganda or maybe some uh, uh, malicious intention. So as you can see, 63% of US citizens were greatly confused by looking at those videos and the images, whether that is correct or not. 27% was somewhat confused and 10% was uh, very clear that there's no confusion. These videos or images are uh, altered or these uh, videos and images are fake. So as you can understand, uh, as we understand that the US is uh, one of the developing countries with uh, a good amount of literacy and there also if uh, this altered videos and images are circulated through social media, 90% of them are somehow confused. So at least this research shows it. So again, if you see, so uh, what they believe that obviously the citizen uh, uh, will believe that uh, most of them has believed that it should be restricted to alter video or images. So steps should be taken. And still 22% of uh, people believe that there should be freedom uh, in circulating all those things. So if you see that uh, as one of the question of uh, that survey, it was asked that public should not be expected to recognize altered video and images. Public should not be given burden to recognize. Rather, rather the law enforcement agencies or the government should take the responsibility that let's say if some information is being forwarded, so that should be uh, filtered or maybe some tag should come that uh, those informations are not factual. Now, uh, let us uh, see the various, uh, you can say misinformation, uh, disinformation. So first one, uh, first mis misinformation was clickbait headlines of false connection. So this is very common in media circle. You will see sometime the headlines are very catchy, but if you go inside that, you won't find it that it is going that way. So like uh, when uh, uh, Messi was retired, announce, announce, uh, retired uh, announced his retirement, then uh, Ronaldo has given a reaction that uh, he is feeling a uh, cry. So somebody uh, has found this as very shocking. So what is uh, shocking about this? So people try to make this kind of headlines, catching headlines, because as a normal human being, what we do, we look at the headlines and we don't go uh, much inside that. So whatever headlines is saying, uh, things are being uh, reacted over that. So uh, many times what happens that uh, lots of uh, law and order problems has become due to those headlines. So this was the line which he has used that it hurts to see Leon Messi cry. So it should not be talking. He was uh, retired, getting retired from the uh, uh, this. So he, he was felt crying. So there's, there's nothing shocking about it. Second is, second misinformation is misleading content. So people, uh, what happens, they try to give data in such a manner that it shows or giving some different meaning. For example, I'm showing this uh, data from the Philippines uh, when uh, President Duterte 
had joined uh, Philippines government. So what has been shown that after he joined, the crime rate has decreased. But if you see it carefully, what you will see that since 2015, it was yearly data and 16, it is of six months. Uh, and again, you will see here in 16, it is for one month. So uh, you cannot compare apple with orange. You cannot uh, plot in one graph monthly and yearly data as a part of one axis that cannot be drawn. And that is why you see that the number of crime is getting decreasing. So these are the misleading content which is uh, being circulated. So these type of thing you will find uh, even in Indian context, I'm not going to that. But many a times you must have seen that uh, either government or some political parties, they are putting this kind of information um, in one scale or another to just show uh, that something is decreasing or something is increasing. So those, those kind of things are uh, available. Uh, sometimes some images, some videos are put in some different context. So uh, maybe let's say some situation is going on and in that situation, a different kind of image which is already available on the uh, media. So those things are being put together to put some kind of disinformation. So this is, uh, this kind of disinformation is circulated. So for example, this was uh, when uh, in 2019, CAA was introduced. So this kind of uh, video was circulated. So which was uh, totally out of context because uh, the image in the right side of uh, Home Ministry, as you can see, that was from another period from Kerala, not uh, in the same context. So these things are being used. I'm not going to into the detail of this. Uh, you must be knowing all these kind of news are uh, being circulated. So my aim is just to uh, just give some awareness regarding that uh, if this kind of information is there, we need to verify all those informations. Uh, Sometimes you will find the content is totally imposter, totally created. Like when uh, there was commencement of for this COVID-19 virus in India, you must have seen that this kind of OM office memorandum was circulated, saying that if uh, in these states, if uh, the school or colleges are not closed, so rupees 5,000 fine will be applicable for a day. So this was circulated. Later on, uh, it was uh, refuted by Ministry of Health that this kind of uh, OM office memorandum is fake, it's wrong. So content was totally imposter. Uh, sometimes the content is being manipulated. As we were looking at the images in the beginning, contents are being manipulated to show something else. Like in this image, it has been, uh, it is basically a manipulated image uh, where you can see a police officer is uh, uh, there with uh, Sri Rajnath Singh. So this kind of thing uh, was, as you can understand, the images are, are manipulated, content are manipulated with uh, some intention. And this was the right image, which was already available in the social media. And from there, basically from a movie, which has been taken. And uh, as you can understand the Photoshopping these day is very easy. It's, it's like lots of uh, software are there. You can change any face with anyone. Then uh, there are fabricated content, which is, you could say, created. Wow. Uh, like anything. So like here, as you can see, a news was circulated like this in the name of uh, uh, Chief Minister of Delhi. Again, the content was fabricated. Now, uh, as we can understand uh, the many parts of uh, misinformation and disinformation. So let us understand how these kind of information disorder are being, are being circulated. So there are basically three parts. One is agent, second is message, 
and third is interpreter. So when, whenever we talk about ad, agents, so agents are one, one who are circulating the message. So sometimes these are uh, bots or robots, uh, which is circulating those messages. So these agents understand the targets. They uh, define first that what are their intended audience? Who will take interest in what? Nowadays, you, you uh, must be understanding that in our mobile phone, whatever activity we are doing, so once we have done something, you will see there are lots of advertisement of that is coming together. Uh, maybe let's say if we have purchased a, a pair of shoes, you will see that, or we have at least search in Google that a pair of shoes or maybe a brand, maybe Nike, Reebok or anything. So you will see there are lots of advertisement which is coming together. So accordingly, uh, the agent, they identify the audience and they also identify the method of spread. And then as far as message is concerned, so message may be in the form of uh, just text, it may be in the form of image, it may be in the form of uh, audio, it may be in form of video. And interpreter is how a response is coming from the audience who is listening to that. So uh, this is what uh, the elements of information disorder, this is how uh, information disorder is circulated. So as you can see, so it is created and then it is circulated. This production is basically circulation through various uh, media platform or social media platform. And then that is distributed in public. So uh, what is being done? Let's say some content is there. So that is made viral. Viral means what? Like given within a given time, you will see it has appeared many times. It was liked by many times. So you will see these social media platform. They put these things at the trending. So that is that is why uh, that is how things get viral. So well, you will see, or you must have heard that these kind of likes, dislikes are mostly manipulated by. Uh, what we call as bots or robots or you can say the computer systems. So uh, by computer programming, all these kind of things are being manipulated to make anything viral, any content viral. And uh, once it gets viral, you will see there are lots of uh, reaction on that. So initially, these kind of uh, information disorder has been used uh, uh, in the elections in the United States. Uh, let's say when uh, 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 you can see the last election, when uh, lots of information were, uh, uh, you can say, spread all over. And then later on, you, you have seen that it has also come uh, in uh, Indian elections. There also, there were lots of misinformation. There are lots of uh, viral content of past or maybe previous or maybe a fabricated one. There are many which were being circulated. So uh, there are uh, many ways these things are created. So I'm just concentrating on manipulated content, uh, mostly manipulated audios, videos, and images. So I'll talk about images and videos, uh, mostly where how content are being manipulated. So these are uh, some methods where uh, uh, you can say content are being manipulated. So these are cloning, splicing, resampling, morphing, and the last one is deep fake, very, very dangerous. Now you will see there are lots of applications which is creating deep fakes. And uh, as you can understand that uh, how serious it can be for uh, general people like us, general mass like us, if uh, like anything, uh, is being deep fake or uh, is made as deep fake and circulated over social media. So nobody immediately uh, believe that uh, the person was not there. So uh, we'll discuss all those things. So cloning is the most basic part of uh, media or multimedia alteration technique. So where what is being done? A part of image, video or audio 
is copied and pasted into another part of the same image, video or audio. So, for example, here as you can see that uh, this gun was there, but a part of this image in the right side was taken and that was pasted on the same image. So, you can see there is no gun here. So, this is very common. Uh, one part is taken from the same image and that is pasted at another part to hide some information. You will find on the internet lots of uh, such kind of images are there. This was, uh, these images were also used by political leaders at various places. So we are not going to discuss all those things. Just I'm uh, just showing you a glimpse to understand that uh, copy move forgery was very common. People use it either for political interest. As far as movie is concerned, this cloning was used to uh, show the crowd in low budget movies. Even in uh, this is one clip from Star Wars. So there also uh, cloning were used. Cloning was used to show this uh, crowd. So even in low budget movie, people use it. And uh, here, uh, since intention is not bad, there is no harm using all these kind of thing where we can use the technology. Splicing is one where uh, two or three images are there and that is used to make a single composite. Like here, uh, uh, you, you, you will see that this altered image was made using one, two, and three, these three images. So this is, uh, uh, you can say, the very old kind of uh, image, which I'm hiding here. Uh, so this is at the time when uh, there was uh, US-Iraq war, and Bill Clinton used to be president of United States and Saddam Hussein of Iraq. And at that time, this kind of news was appeared. Uh, people were not very new to this kind of technology. And uh, you can understand that this kind of thing has uh, taken lots of uh, media attention at that time. Resampling is uh, like some changes is done in a part of the image. Just resampling is being done by resizing, rotating, stretching. As you can see here, uh, the tiger here is uh, calm, but here there is something. So just the purpose is to show that uh, we can uh, make expression anything. Even uh, this kind of technique is also used to change, uh, you can say number plate, registration uh, plate, registration number plate of vehicle that is being used to, uh, resampling is being used to show different numbers. So let's say if CCTV footage is there, so that can be manipulated or that can be resampled to show different number. So these kind of things are there. So I'm not going to uh, give more detail. All the things are available online. Next is morphing. So most, uh, you can say, wrongly used word is morphing. Whenever there is a manipulated image, video, or audio, uh, people call it the morph image or morph video. See, morphing is a kind of technique which gradually changes the image from one form to another. As you can see here, this person or the picture of a person that was gradually made change to look like this uh, robot. So this is a gradual change which is being done. Uh, so what other usually people would like to say is uh, that compositing or splicing kind of thing that people call as morph images. We can say doctored image, but saying uh, any other manipulated image as morph image will be a wrong practice. At least it is not used by, it should not be used by uh, the experts. And I, I believe that they don't use it. The most dangerous one is the fake. And you must have heard when uh, uh, in, uh, uh, if I remember the year correctly, it was probably 2014 when synthetic Obama, this article has come all, all around. So Obama at that time used to be president of the United States so his video, one video was shown at BBC News. So he was speaking 
something. But actually, he was not President Obama, but it was made through deep fakes or deep learning technology. So now it was very difficult to believe that the video in video, President Obama is not present and he is not speaking what is being shown. So um, now you will see that deep fake is very common. There are lots of software which are available to create these kind of synthetic video, audio. Even nowadays, it is used to create your signature songs. So let's say your uh, facimile signature is available somewhere, three, four uh, places. So based on those signatures, your signature can be created. If uh, your images are available or your videos are available, so those using those video, which is having your uh, face, your voice. So based on that, uh, you can say the, the video and the voice will be very, very close to the real one. Because this kind of algorithm works in uh, the technology that they create some synthetic one. And then they uh, try to match with the original one. And it is so perfect that most of the time you won't be able to detect that whether this is the genuine one or synthetic one. So this is the most dangerous type of uh, thing which is uh, there. And uh, now there are lots of research people are doing and uh, they have done also to detect these kind of... See, I don't know whether you are able to hoard this or not. This is the forged one. So uh, my aim to say this is that we need to be aware that whether we can able to detect these information disorder or not. So there are many things which we can use, like reverse image search is the simplest one. As a layman, everybody can uh, use it to see that uh, whether the image is or the whatever manipulated thing is there is fake or not. Similarly, uh, we can see if uh, some video is there. So YouTube data viewer can, can also give uh, some information regarding that. XA viewer is there. Then there are some multimedia forensics technique and uh, social media analysis technique. Like uh, uh, there are techniques. So we'll go a bit of detail of this. I'm not going to show you uh, by doing all these things. Uh, since we don't have much time, you can go and search all these things, or you must be knowing many of these things. So uh, mostly if there are misleading content and uh, misleading context, so Google reverse image search or TinEye or Revi, and many such applications are there online, which is free. You can go and use that to verify whether whatever you are getting is the original content or it is a misleading content or it is a content which has been uh, spread in misleading context. So that all kind of information you can get using this reverse, reverse image search. Again, there are uh, YouTube uh, data viewer or video data viewer. So Amnesty YouTube data viewer is uh, the one which you can get easily. Then Invid is there, New Check is there. There are many, there are not one or two. There are, there are various tools. But again, Amnesty is uh, the one which is uh, free of cost available. You can use that. Uh, you can check that whether uh, this uh, video which has been uh, uh, you can say uploaded on YouTube when it, it was uploaded, whether there is match with the previous videos. So you won't see exactly what videos are, but at least you will get some, uh, uh, you can say images from these video and then uh, you can search those images through reverse image search. So uh, 
again in case of video also you can use that xf data which is exchangeable image file data basically in every image which has been uh, captured through a uh, camera that is having some metadata and those metadata is stored in that image file itself so this exchangeable image file is one which is having lots of information regarding date and time camera make and model geolocation etc and many other information so there are lots of free exif viewer which is available online you can search those exif viewer you can upload your image and you can know when and how these images or these medias or multimedias were created so all those information you can get by using those exif viewer the lots of just you need to search then multimedia forensics is uh, one uh, branch of digital forensics you can understand which is mostly about whether the content like in terms of image video or audio is tampered with or not whether it is synthetic whether uh, it can be enhanced for better vision whether we can identify the person whether uh, we can identify the capturing device or we can describe the content so all these information are addressed under multimedia forensics uh, so mostly here uh, you will see the techniques of uh, machine learning is being utilized to uh, answer all these questions so uh, here as far as enhancement is concerned so that is basic image processing tools uh, nowadays everywhere you will see that cctv are installed but many a times you must have heard that okay the content is not clearly visible it may be uh, the face of the person or maybe sometime the registration number of vehicle those are not clearly visible so all those thing can be enhanced nowadays uh, there are many uh, software paid software are available even some uh, free software are also available to uh, see whether to enhance these uh, video which is not clearly visible so as far as, as tampering is concerned uh, of those images and video that can be done uh, uh, using various techniques so utilizing jpeg compression thing as we know that most of the images which we capture is compressed through jpeg algorithm so using any of those techniques we can uh, uh, detect whether uh, the image or video is manipulated or not camera based technique is also there let's say if uh, some content was uh, doctored it was made through splicing so there may be there may be two cameras which uh, might have been used to create that uh, doctored image so even camera property can also help to detect tampering then uh, color analysis is there so if you do a uh, color analysis so since two things have been taken from two different places so random color palette or pseudo color temperature that is again going to help you so i'm not going to go uh, in the details of all these things but these techniques are available some physics based techniques are also there like light inconsistencies and specular highlights those are there so uh, let us see an example here of error level analysis so this is uh, let's say an image and we want to say that whether uh, this is fake or not or whether there is a manipulation in this kind of image or not so you will see even online there are lots of uh, platform where you can check error level analysis online free of cost so you can check it free of cost so let's say this is uh, the original image as you can see here there is a book and now this is manipulated one one two three same book right so image content what changed it it was content uh, changed by pasting this thing here so which is cloning and just putting something here as you can see a small uh, dinosaurus 
So it is splicing again. So it is, this is the image which was forced to have both splicing as well as cloning. And the uh, error level analysis give uh, this kind of result in this. So as you can uh, see that error level analysis is basically try to find out if compression has been done two times, three times, four times, five times, or let's say if initially one part of the image was JPEG compression with one kind of, uh, uh, you can say, or uh, compression table, and second time it was different kind of compression table is being used. So in JPEG uh, uh, compression, you will see this is uh, basically scalar quantization. So there is a quantization table. I don't want to go in technical detail of that. So it might happen that one camera is using one kind of uh, uh, that quantization table and another kind of image is uh, used by using or made by using different kind of tables. So those kind of information is given. Although uh, I don't think whether you will realize it or not here that there is manipulation, uh, it can be uh, check based on error level analysis or by statistical analysis that there is a change in profile of noise, whichever is seen here. So basically noise profile is being checked. Cloning detection is again done by this color map using this color map intensity. We can say here again, as you can see that this part of the image This part of the image is, uh, sorry. Ah, this part of the image is in a different color, which has been shown that there is some manipulation in this part, in this part, so that can be checked. Light inconsistency is something which can be seen, like we have also done some uh, uh, research on that. So just light inconsistency is that the concept is, like let's say if we understand the concept of physics so if light is coming from one direction so shadow formation should be accordingly opposite to that direction so uh, it should not happen that in an image shadow formation of two parts of the same image should be in two different direction like here as you can see uh, that uh, shadow formation here for uh, this is in this direction and for this is in this direction so it means there is some problem. So like we have done some uh, experimentation on this, as you can see here, it has been shown as heat map. And as you can see here, the light coming from uh, all these three person is in front and for this it is coming light way in this direction. So it, it talks about that there is some manipulation. The original was this. And this is what the manipulated is. So uh, these kind of te techniques are there, which uh, can be appreciated. You, you can appreciate that by looking, just by looking that you understand that there is manipulation or not. Again, uh, linking image video with the device. Again, law enforcement agency have uh, most of the time has questions that uh, whether uh, this image has been uh, taken from this kind of uh, uh, device or not. So maybe mobile phone, maybe camera. So th those can, also be done using this multimedia forensic approach, basically a signal processing approach. As far as social media analysis is concerned, OSINT and Croatangle and many other is there. OSINT is uh, the one which people are mostly relying on. So uh, there are many techniques by which we can analyze the content which is there on uh, social media. So that can also be done. For layman, uh, there are uh, various uh, fact checking site where uh, we can go. Like Boom Live is there, Alt News is there, Satyan Vesi is there by IIT Kanpur, and there are many. So I've just highlighted the three. So these are uh, some uh, website. By going to that, you can check whether the information is correct or not. Uh, government, India, uh, government, of, government of India has also uh, published uh, or has also developed uh, a fact checking website, which is pib.gov.in, that is Press Information Bureau. 
So from here also, uh, you can check whether a particular information is fake or not. So what we should do as a layman, if we don't understand that uh, if uh, media or multimedia has been circulated, whether it is fake, whether it is uh, misinformation or disinformation. So let's say if it has been circulated through a different platform or uh, some different media. So have we heard about the media company before who is circulating this? Does the website URL where uh, it is present looks real? Can we find the same news on the normal media, which is uh, giving the news on daily to day uh, day to day basis, whether it is present there also or not? Does the story have quote from a sport official or not? Whether there is anything regarding where you, you can get more information regarding this or not? Do the images from good sources? Do we know the source of those images? Is the story well written? Like as we have seen in case of uh, the news clip, which I have uh, highlighted here of uh, Mr. Kedriva. So that was not well written. So whether it is well written or not. And uh, finally, do the fact check, fact word check or not. So all these things we need to question ourselves before we are circulating from our end. So there are many various legal consequences. Why uh, this is being highlighted? The reason is that we are we may spread something as misinformation. We don't know that whether it is uh, genuine or not. So what we do, we spread it, or we just circulate it to our friends or maybe we we'll post on our uh, Facebook. So there are legal consequences. So there are various laws uh, as per Indian Penal Code or IT Act. So where the punishment may go from six months to five years. So depending on what is the gravity, so it may be three months even. So three months to five years and that to imprisonment or fine. So these kind of things can happen. Again, as I told you that uh, uh, these are the different sections of uh, ITL 2005, which has been again uh, amended in 2008. So all those things uh, are there. So once we are spreading something or circulating through our social media platform, what is important is we must verify. And uh, if we have confusion that whether it is genuine or not, we should not forward it to others. So uh, lastly, what I would like to say, or I what I would like to highlight the quote of American writer Richard Back, who in his, one of uh, his, uh, you can say the story collection has uh, said that don't believe what your eyes are telling you. All they show is limitation look with your understanding. What is important is we need to check the things by our understanding, by our knowledge. So if we think that, okay, this content should not be original or this content had some problem, then we must check the fact. So that is what uh, I would like to say for the day. Thank you. I think I have uh, completed in the given time. So there were, yes, uh, technical issues in between. Uh, is there any questions? So I will happy to take those questions. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, sir. And uh, indeed the session was really interesting. And I even, I completely enjoy the every bit of the session where there is a numerous uh, things which covered in the session, which definitely gonna help us and uh, understand the, uh, the major aspects of cyber awareness. So thank you so much, sir. Now this session is uh, completely open for all the questions and queries from the participants. And if you have any question, you can raise your hand. We will surely and let you allow to ask your question. Anyone wants to ask any question to Dr. Rajesh, sir?
and I really want to inform sir that there are lots of appreciation in the chat for your amazing session. Thank you. So yeah, there is one hand raised. Just a second. Uh, yes, uh, you can ask your question, please. Sir, I have asked a question in the chat section, sir. Oh. Uh, you can ask now as well. Okay, okay. Sir, I am Sheikh Yasser Ali. I am from West Bengal, currently pursuing MSc Forensic Science. Okay. Sir, uh, sir, I would like to ask that in social media, many uh, fake and misinformation are being shared by eminent personalities who are, uh, who are having a position in the society or who are famous. So, and in response to that, in the, for, for that information, many uh, violences are being occurring uh, in the real world through, through that information. So my question is that being the forensic I mean, students or as in sensible, sensible citizens, how we can cope up with that or how we can sort it out or how we can, I mean, we can uh, how to cope up with it? Because it is yes, morally sir, wrong you, as yes, well as legally, sir. Yeah, thank you, Yasir, for the question. Yes, and I think that is what the purpose of this kind of awareness campaign, like Surakshit Bharat campaign or many others. As a forensic student, so what you can do, you can spread awareness uh, regarding all these kind of things. See, uh, so for political benefits or uh, many other benefits, people circulate these kind of things. And uh, a layman who does not understand whether that is correct or not, so there, there may be various kind of violence everywhere in the country. So that is why it is important as a student or as a human being, as a part of the society that we should uh, create awareness uh, regarding all these kind of things so that people should get aware and uh, there should not be uh, any such incidents. So yes, we understand that there are some religious things, there are some uh, uh, political thing, and there are many other things which is coming out due to uh, fake news or uh, information disorder, I should say. Thank you so much. And I'm, I, I hope uh, yes, you answer, your question has been answered. Uh, now, any more questions from the participants in? Uh, I guess there is no more questions. So now I hand over the session again to my co-host, uh, Ruchika. Ruchika, session is over to you. Thank you so much, ma'am. And uh, thank you, Rajesh, sir, for such a wonderful session. It was indeed an eye-opening talk uh, for me and for all uh, our participants as well. I have enjoyed every passing minute of your session and definitely our participants have learned a lot new things from you. Uh, so that uh, they can protect themselves from upcoming future uh, cyber threats. And uh, definitely after your session, we are not going to believe anything we see. Um, so thank you so much, sir. Uh, with this. No, no, I'm, I'm not saying that you don't believe anything which you see. You believe yes. the things, but with understanding. Yes, sir. Definitely, sir. Yeah. Believe anything after uh, understanding and observing everything. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. So with this, uh, on behalf of Suraksit uh, Bharat campaign and SIFS India, uh, I take this opportunity to uh, present this e-certificate of appreciation to Dr. Rajesh Kumar, sir, for delivering such an outstanding cyber awareness talk on don't trust your eyes, they can deceive you. Uh, we are grateful for your earnest contribution as a speaker in Suraksit Bharat campaign. Thank you so much, sir, for accepting our re request and uh, being with us here today and sharing such a name and name talk with us. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, for more updates, all the participants, you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and uh, all the sessions recording have been available in our YouTube channel, Forensic 365. So you can visit there and see, uh, watch all the session recordings. And for those participants who are facing to facing difficulty to download certificate, there are few easy steps so that you can download your certificate. Go to the Google Chrome and type forensicevents.com. And here the window will be open. 
So you have to click on the download certificate icon and then put your registered email address in the search bar. And here you can download your certificate. So thank you everyone. Thank you Rajesh sir once again for being with us. Thank you. Uh, so now with uh, permission to Dr. Rajesh sir, I would like to end this session. Sure. Thank you sir. Thank you so much sir once again. Thank you.